great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Oh, come on. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. If you really realize that God has done something for you wherever you are, just take a moment of time to give God some praise, to give God some glory, to shout, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! Thank you for being an awesome God! Thank you for making a way. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, God. You are worthy. 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 Of all glory. You are worthy. Of all honor. You are worthy. Of all praise. Oh, come on. Give God your best praise. 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 Our awesome God is worthy of our awesome praise. Oh, come on. Give him your hallelujah, oh come on! And give him your thank you, Jesus, oh come on! And God is good to have some praise, amen? Amen, 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 amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time, is it not? Amen. And this morning, before we pray, we just want to ask that we have some prayer concerns this morning that you would please remember, Minister Faison's brother, that God's healing hands will be upon him, amen? And that also you would just please remember um, Tiffany Bargeman's mother, amen, that God's healing hands will be upon them both, amen. We serve an awesome God who cannot fail. We serve an awesome God who can do all things, amen. So let us pray. Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, we just ask and pray that you will be in the midst of this service, Father God. You heard the requests, Father God, the concerns, Father God, of this household, Lord God, and there may be more. But God, we are calling on God Almighty, the one Lord God who can do all things but fail, Father God. We ask and pray that you will touch those concerns, Father God. Be with those individuals right now, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. That your healing hands will be upon them, Father God. We just ask and pray that you would just touch our hearts and minds, Father God. That you would prepare us for the word that's going to come forth, Father God. We realize that there is a word on high for us, Father God. And we're excited, Father God, about what you're about to do in our midst, Father God. Thank you so very much for that, Father God. Bless this awesome man of God, Father God, that's going to bring forth your word, Father God. Help him to speak with clarity, Father God, with your anointing and your power, Father God. And give us ears, Father God to hear and a heart ready to receive. In Jesus' awesome and mighty name we do pray. Amen, 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 amen. This morning's scripture will be coming from the Gospel of Mark, the 16th chapter. The Gospel of Mark, the 16th chapter, starting at verse 9. And it reads thusly. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them who had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, of her, believed not. After that, he appeared in another form unto them, unto two of them, as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the, re the res unto the residue. Neither believed they them. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and unbridled them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world 
and preach the gospel to each creature. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he who believes not shall be damned. And, and these signs shall follow them who believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. What a mighty word from the Lord. Amen. I have read the Gospel of Mark, the 16th chapter, verses 9 through 18. What I'm also word for from the Lord for his people. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God is going to do in this place today. So let's just take a moment in time to set the atmosphere, to prepare our hearts and minds, because God is speaking in this place. Give God some praise. I present to you our awesome pastor, who we thank to her. See you. God bless you. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. The wonder that's down in your soul. Bless. Hallelujah. His name. Hallelujah. We greet you in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus the Christ, who is Lord. Amen. Not just today, but every day. The same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank him for his immutable grace. We thank him for, hallelujah, that irresistible grace that draws us to him. And we thank him, hallelujah, for the exceeding and great joy that we have in him and through him. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you to, amen, hold your places in Mark, the 16th chapter. Amen. But go with me to Luke. Amen. Luke. Amen. The 10th chapter, verses 17 through 20. Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 17 through 20. Again, we are praying for our families. Again, we, amen, are praying for, amen, uh, the sister... Amen. Uh, Sister Yvonne, amen, there in New York. Thank God for you. She is the niece of Sister Jackie Stanley. With Again, Barbara McLeod, we are lifting her up. And amen, the brother, Minister Face, and then all of you, amen, to Mother Mary Moore. God bless you. Praying for you. Thank God for you. She is faithful in watching us week in and week out. So we are blessed. Hallelujah. Luke, the 10th chapter, around the 17th verse, says, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means, amen, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject, amen, unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are are written in heaven. Hallelujah. Mark, the 16th chapter, 14th verse says, Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them, rebuked them with, amen, their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after Amen, he was risen. Amen. I want to deal with the thought. When feelings fuel your faith. Amen. When feelings fuel your faith. Uh, again, don't let your doubt affect your shout. Don't let your doubt affect your shout. Hallelujah. 
Amen. If you will, bow your heads with us for a brief word of prayer. Father, we thank you again for all that you have done, and we honor you, and we, amen, count it a privilege and a joy to be able to stand behind this, thy sacred desk. Now, Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way in all that we seek to say and do. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Feelings, if you allow them, amen, can affect and impact your understanding of just who God is and what he can do in your life. Being saved, amen, hallelujah, is a fact. When we are, amen, received by Jesus after praying that prayer, we are indeed, amen, a child of God. We experience restoration. We ex experience renewal. And from time to time, amen, we will feel, hallelujah, revival as it relates to, amen, what God speaks to us as it relates to who we are in him. But beloved, as we are in this wonderful season, this season of Easter time, Amen. As we expand upon the knowledge, amen, of who we are as God's elect and chosen, I believe that it is imperative, it is important that we not assume the position as cautious and casual observers, but we must be truly positioned for what God has planned for our lives. We should be driven by the understanding of who he is based upon what he's already done in our lives. Amen. We are positioned for the possible, knowing that a kingdom-driven agenda allows for God's plans to truly take effect. And what truly has blessed me over the course of the last three to four weeks, amen, is the number of times that I've seen uh, this thing being duplicated in the lives of people who are truly trusting him for everything, not just some things, but are committed and submitted to trusting God for everything. Time and time again, I've seen him move, and amen, he's been doing that, which has been exceeding and abundantly above all we could ever ask or think in the lives of those who are walking by faith and not by sight. Yet, despite this, I still find myself, amen, bothered by the seeming lack of faith that's being demonstrated by so many who claim they know the Lord, Amen. While doing so, their actions indicate otherwise. Saints of God, when this happens, it sends a not-so-subtle message about the true state of their spirituality. More specifically, it reveals, amen, and shows where they are as it relates to their thinking. We'll talk about it on Tuesday. Amen. What do you truly and ultimately believe about God? Do you trust him? Amen. Or are you just talking to be talking? Our thinking reveals much about us as it relates to our beliefs. But not only that, amen, I've seen it as it relates to temperament. Amen. What we experience and encounter and encounter in this life, amen, reveals to us, amen, what we truly are trusting and believing God for them. And with our temperament, based upon what occurs or what happens, it'll either make you bitter or better. Hello, somebody. I'm still going to trust God. I don't care how it may look. I don't care what folk may say, Minister McCullers. Amen. Hallelujah. I know that God is working it out for my good. But also it reveals not just something about their thinking and their temperament, but ultimately it speaks to their theology. 
Hallelujah. Whereas thinking talks about their beliefs, a man and a man temperament talks about whether or not we're going to respond or react better or better. But theology goes to our beliefs. Wow. All of these. And we'll talk about on Tuesday are tied to and linked to that all important element of trust. If any of them have become tainted with something that impairs our ability to lean and depend on God. It creates an opening, an aperture, if you will, wherein things can become undue influencers in our lives. Undue influences. I'm glad, amen, amen, when I was talking to a preacher some years ago, I asked them, amen, as I was contemplating answering the call, I said, why do people do what they do? He said, folk are going to do, amen, what folk want to do. Understand this. The thing about your theology, for more than anything, it represents, amen, hallelujah, your understanding of just who God is in your life. Your theology helps you forge and provides a framework wherein you can process all that happens in your life. Without it, we will go through a process, amen, of dealing with matters in whimsical fashion based upon what we want to do. True faith, my brothers and sisters, is best understood Hallelujah. In the fruit that's formed as a result of your relationship with God. In Matthew 7, chapter 16, verse, Jesus speaking about false prophets. Amen. Let's us know. Amen. That you shall know them by their fruits. Accordingly, it is our moral compass. Amen. As we are led by the Holy Spirit. True faith. Trust in God and believe in God. Otherwise, we will find ourselves, amen, diverted. Hello, somebody that distracted, amen. And guess what? Deviating from what the Lord wants us to do. This, amen, many times produces individuals who operate not based upon a spiritual understanding, but dealing with things on a case-by-case basis. Their ethics is based upon what they've been called situational ethics. In situation ethics, right and wrong depend upon the situation. There are no universal or moral rules or rights. Amen. Each case tends to be unique and deserves a unique situation or solution. Situation ethics teaches that ethical decisions, amen, should follow flexible guidelines rather than absolute rules and be taken on a case by case basis. Oh, can I get a witness this morning? Ethical decisions are based upon context. And dependent upon circumstances. In other words, what one person does may bow, it may be deemed wrong. If another person does it, it might be okay. That's not applying the word of God. Consequently, an adherent approaches ethical problems with some general or moral principles. Amen, amen, if doing so would lead to a greater good. Situation ethics, amen, teaches that particular types of action don't have, amen, an inherent moral value. Whether they are good or bad, amen, is determined by the results. Paying your tithes, amen, should not be something that's questionable. Living holy, amen, should not be, amen, something that we scratch our head and say, well, we'll make an exception in this case. Such a construct allows a person, amen, to carry out acts that while they are generally regarded as bad, 
hello in here, such as, amen, stepping away from the Lord. Amen. Sometimes and somehow we use it to justify, amen, what we deem as necessary for the moment. I don't know about you, but this brings about an uncomfortable conclusion. Amen. But it will begin to spill over and impact other areas of your life as well. Hello in here. Such challenges are not new. And we'll talk about it on Tuesday. They are contained in the word of God. Abraham's description. And even Samuel, a man, even telling something a little different when he went up, a man, to anoint David. The Hebrew midwives, a man, when they were tasked, a man, with doing certain things. You've got to understand that only what we do for God is ultimately going to last. And we must stand upon his word. However, make no bones about it. Amen. In matters that pertain to our faith, we have to do the right thing. And I'm not talking about, amen, Spike Lee's movie. Amen. But I'm talking about the right thing. Our theology, that is, our thinking about God, amen, requires that we put our faith into practice through experiential and existential and epistemological, amen, understanding of who he is. The latter means your knowledge of God. Do you know him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know the man from Galilee, the one who stepped out on the water? And calm the raging sea. True believers at the end of the day. Because they love God. Because they know God. And because they've seen him at work in their lives. Realize I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stand firm. Amen. On his promises. And because of this. Their journey with the Lord. Amen. Reveals that they are both committed. And convinced about the validity of their faith. As we return to our text. I want to say that it speaks to. And shows the importance of faith. And the need to cling to what the Lord has spoken concerning us. When we are presented with trying moments as the disciples are in the passage. Amen. You know these moments are designed to reveal just not, amen, who you are, amen, but where you are in the Lord. In these times, amen, we are to trust him with everything we have. In these few short verses, we see the prevalence of one thing, this belief. Amen. In Mark's gospel, we see a man disbelief being so prevalent. It was linked to their inability to process what Jesus had assured them of time and time again. And what makes it all the more astounding is when it is presented against the backdrop, amen, of the celebratory nature, amen, of the response that they had just, amen, seen God move in their lives. That they had seen the miraculous. They had seen how, amen, the Lord could and would use them. But somehow, somewhere, something changed. And it impacted their understanding to the point that doubt crept in. We see, amen, that doubting had diminished their shout. The suddenness of it all. Provides an interesting backdrop for us today. And it warrants a closer look. Because we too can find ourselves faced with the same or similar circumstances. Arising out of trials and tribulation. And when they do, they give space for doubt in our own lives. Don't act like you don't have your moments. I know you say to love Jesus, but don't act like you don't have moments when that bill is due. Amen. Don't act, act like you, amen, don't have moments wherein you don't know how you're going to make it. Hallelujah. Moments that take us from celebration that came from the certainty of our shout. 
to the sadness of our situation or circumstances. In my remaining time, let us take a few moments to delve deeper and gain further insights by making, amen, the following observations, amen, surrounding doubt as it is presented in our text. If you will, verses 9 through 11 in Mark's gospel says so much. We see that first and foremost, amen, that doubt's formation was immediate. Its formation was immediate. It didn't take weeks. It didn't take months. It took place in relative hours after Jesus died at Calvary. The text says that when Mary Magdalene, whom that he had appeared to first, and it clarifies that even the more of whom he had cast out seven devils. I need you to underline that point. Mary Magdalene, understand this, that she went in, amen, and told them that she had been with him as they mourned and as they wept. Amen. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believe not. They were so caught up in their feelings. No matter what Jesus had told them, hello in here. Even though Mary had said that the word was true, they did not want to hear it. From the outset, things, amen, show us. That even in light of and in despite the fact that things were put in place to discredit the resurrection story, that they themselves were bailing with the predicament. Every now and then we all encounter folk that you can talk to your blue in the face, trying to get them to see that there is indeed a better way. Sometimes, amen, we try to remind them that the Lord is going to work it out. But just like in this text, we can get a clear understanding about the gravity of their circumstances. For the disciples, it was the gravity of their grief. They were emotional wrecks and didn't want to hear it. Oh, I need you to talk to somebody right now. Amen. You need, amen, to be talking to yourself. Amen. Remind yourself. That you don't need to be an emotional wreck. You should not allow, amen, what's going on around you to dictate and to determine what God has spoken concerning your life. Where was their faith? These guys didn't want to hear it. Where was their faith? This may seem harsh, but navigating trauma and tragedy can be tricky at times. You get caught up, amen, in your feelings. You start dealing, amen, with the extent of your emotions. And guess what? Hallelujah. It takes you to another place. But my brothers and sisters, understand this. Always allow your faith to prevail. I don't care what it may look like. You've got to have a hallelujah anyhow. Attitude. You've got to let the devil know, amen, in spite of what it may look like, in spite of what's going on right now, my God is still in control. But not only do we see, amen, the doubt's formation was immediate, but secondly, we can see, amen, that, that, that it doubt's force was immobilizing. Its force was immobilizing. Not only, get this, amen, do we see it happening with Mary Magdalene, but we see that as they are still sitting there in the, their feelings, not believing, we find in verses 12 and reading on down, amen, that Jesus is indeed appearing in other places. It says he appeared in another form under two of them. As they walked and went into the country, and they went and told it unto the residue. 
and they believed them not as well. They didn't want to hear it from them either. The two in the group had left and gone home to Emmaus. Jesus, a man, talked with them. Amen. As they walked from Jerusalem. One of these disciples was named Cleophas. The other was probably, was probably his wife. And as they walked, Jesus came alongside and began to talk with them. Jesus spoke with them. And as they walked, amen, they talked about the circumstances and the events surrounding the crucifixion of Jesus. And they talked about all of the things and how their feelings were impacted. They invited this Jesus into their home. Jesus, amen, began to share with them, haven't you heard about what took place in Jerusalem? Amen, while Jesus was in the house, it says, amen, that he opened the scripture and expanded upon them. Hallelujah. And, amen, hallelujah, what he said just truly blessed their hearts. I would have loved to have been there in the midst of that sermon, Minister White. Amen. When they got to their home, amen, they invited the guests to join them. They sat down to have a meal. They gave their guests bread. He took it and blessed it and broke it. When he did, their eyes opened and they saw who their companion truly was. But the text goes on. Go back and read it in Luke, if you will. It says that Jesus vanished immediately out of their sight. This couple, what did they do? They got up from the table and went back to Jerusalem. They had just walked seven miles. They had been discouraged, amen, based upon all that had gone down. But now encouraged, they went back, hello somebody, to tell the disciples about what they had seen, what they had heard. Oh, but verse 13 reveals to us, oh my God, my God, that the disciples didn't want to hear what they had to say either. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, the first, when you're in the midst of dealing with your feelings, doubt can immobilize you. You don't want to go further than where you are, but you've got to trust him with everything that you got. But finally, and I'm just about done, I'm getting ready to get out of here, and hopefully I'll save some for Tuesday. But finally we see a man that doubts fiction was instructional. Its fiction was instructional. Although inadvisable, it provided a teachable moment. Once again, the fiction was rooted, a man, in a false and flawed narrative aimed at discrediting what Jesus had taught them. All of them in the room had believed in Jesus as a Savior. Yet they were struggling with unbelief regarding the resurrection. He had told them, tear it down. And I will raise it up in three days. He had told them, hallelujah, even as the Son of Man, who has come to seek and save that which was lost. Oh my! Even though they had seen the miracles, even though they had witnessed the widow of Nain's son, amen, raised from the dead, even though they had seen Jairus' daughter raised from the dead, even though they had seen a man over Lazarus raised from the dead, they are now struggling with the fact, stretched to the point of not knowing what in the world they were going to do. But our Lord deals with them and shows us how gently He works with us. Hello in here and can lead us to a place of full understanding. Some Greek manuscripts. A man don't have the entirety of Mark's gospel. They stop around the ninth verse. But Luke lets us know that when Jesus came into the room, 
I said, peace be unto you. It was the same peace that when it spoke to the winds and the waves. Amen. It was the same peace that he told them, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, but I give you peace. Even in the midst of telling them off, giving them straight, Jesus was letting them know it's going to be alright I need you to get it together I need you to find yourself I need you to shake it out I need you to understand the magnitude of this moment you see boys you got to know that you know that you know the way I'm rebuking you throw your doubt I'm saying peace I want you to be alone I want you to be young, but my tone is generous, my tone is gracious, and it is gentle, because I want you to know that in this life, you're going to have ups and downs, you see, boys, I know your past, I know how little faith you had, you were the same jokers, but when I was in my trying out, you couldn't even pray for what I was, how can I get a witness up in here, you were Sleeping in the garden, hello in here. And when I was at my lowest moment, you fled. Just like the roaches scattering in the night. But watch out in here. You doubted the testimony of Larry Magdalene. You doubted the testimony of the two other witnesses. And man, but despite your flaws, despite your flaws, I want you to know I need you to have peace.
Man, I could go. <laughs> Jesus, Lord, no, I feel like preaching. Never, 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 never allow the enemy to come in and create in your mind a perception that God is not God. Never allow him to create doubt in you as it relates to what God has spoken concerning his word. And more importantly, his word as it relates to the plan that he has for your life. Understand, get this, doubt set in for them. It was immediate. Understand it was immobilizing. But Jesus used the doubt to be instructional. That he came in. And while he gave it to him, he let him know, I'm depending on you. I'm depending on you. To go out and live this thing. And if you're shut up, if you're shut off, hello somebody. And if you're shut in, your reaction, your response might cause somebody to be shut out of the kingdom. I'm telling you. That at the end of the day, that when you allow your feelings to fuel your faith. And we hear the term all the time, oh, she was up in her feelings, he was up in his feelings. Feelings will have you saying stuff that you can't take back. You can't take it back. Once it comes out your mouth, it's out there. We must know that we know that we know that God stands ready, willing, and able to prove his word in our lives. I promise you on Tuesday night, I'm going to go into this thing a little deeper. But for right now, Jesus essentially restates the Great Commission. Go! You, get out of this place, get out of your feelings, and start operating in your faith. Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Somebody needs to see you. Somebody needs to hear your testimony. For he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. And these signs, them same ones that you saw and understand is greater works you shall do than I shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Be motivated by the miracles and by, amen, the manifestations that shall result as a people embracing a kingdom mindset. I'm going to say this, and some people may have a problem with it, but I'm going to say it anyway. A lot of people are sitting up in buildings right now. They're going back, and I pray when we open up our doors, we'll be ready to go. But a lot of people are sitting up in buildings right now, and Minister McCullough's the only difference between them on Sunday and the rest of the week is this. In the rest of the week, they're doing whatever. But when they come in on Sunday, they have their Sunday morning face and all the whole nine yards, and there is no fruit what are you doing 
It's one thing to talk about it, but it's another thing to walk in it. Maybe there's one here today who does not know Jesus in the pardoning of your sins. I invite you, I encourage you to get out of your feelings and to activate and operate in faith. Doesn't matter what happened last week. Doesn't matter based upon the things that you've been told. Understand this, that when you receive the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, all will be well. And if you pray the prayer, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I want you. I need you. Now more than ever. To be my personal Lord and Savior. For your word says, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, the Lord Jesus, that God have raised him for the de- from the dead and he died for my sins and God has raised him up that I will be saved. If you pray that prayer right now, and if you renounce and denounce everything that's associated with the works of the enemy, guess what? You're saved. You're saved. And let me say this. Week in and week out, I tell people, you never know the magnitude of the time and what goes into creating and writing a sermon, a message. It's one thing to write it, but it's another thing to be able to get up and to be able to, amen, to deliver it. The hours of preparation, it occupies, amen, it garners, amen, every aspect of your life. But understand this, the reason why I show up week in and week out is because I believe God. And that his word is true. So my brothers and sisters, to those of you, don't doubt. Trust him. All shall be well. Father, we love you. We thank you right now. Have your way. Thank you right now for making a way out of no way. Thank you right now for restoration. Thank you right now for renewal. Thank you right now for rejuvenation. Thank you right now in the name of Jesus. As we remember to remember what you've already done in our lives. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. Satan, the blood of Jesus be against you. We're walking in kingdom authority. Hallelujah. Knowing that the Lord has already made a way. And Father, we'll be careful to give your name the honor, the praise, and the glory. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Come on and bless his name. We love you. Thank God for you. As we are here, we're praying about what the Lord will have us to do. And we're positioning ourselves as I have just said, Lord, your will be done. It is my belief that coming out of all we've gone through, that this church will be the church that God has called us to be. Position every disciple that truly desires to do a work for the kingdom. Amen. This is the season for us to stand up and to step forth as we go forth in the name of our Lord. Thank you for your gracious and generous financial support. Thank you for using the platform to give the fine, timely, PayPal, Cash App. Thank you for those of you who come by week in and week out to drop your tithes off. Thank you for those who mail it in. It has truly been a blessing. And we pray that as we go forth, that the Lord will just continue to bless you and yours, knowing that all shall be well. Let us now prepare to receive the benediction. We have entered to worship now with the pardon to serve. Now may the grace of God, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule about henceforth, now and forevermore. Our faith, our faith shall drive us 
our faith shall be furthered. And although it's important for us, hallelujah, to express true thanksgiving to God, we know that moments may come where it may not feel as if things are going well. But we know that, God, you're working them out for us. Father, we bless you. Keep this church family. Now your will be done. Go with us and stand by us. Keep us forever in thy care. For it's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus the Christ we do pray. Let all of God's people say together. We love you.